So one of the mysteries about consciousness is why it should arise in the first place. So you, we have all of these complex systems in the world which um, are purely physical, right? They, they, they need not entail some interior mental dimension. And they seem to get along fine without there being any interior mental dimension. So for instance, in the brain of a living person, right, there are all these neurophysiological events that are chemical and electrical events and these cause behavior, right? These cause everything we see physiologically in a human being. Uh, and any behavior you, s you see, whether it's you know, speech or, or vision or um, uh, any form of perception, certainly movement, all of this can be explained in terms of one physical event causing another, um, or so it seems. And if, if that's the case, well then, it seems like you should be able to have a system that doesn't have any mental life associated with it, that is just a, a physical automaton in some sense, which performs all of the functions of a human being, but is in fact a zombie. And many philosophers talk about a zombie in this sense. A zombie is not a, a dead person come back to life, but it's, it's this thought experiment of a, uh, a, a humanoid creature that has no mental life, that has no consciousness. You know, it's not so far-fetched because it may in fact be uh, lawfully impossible or, or uh, you know, just as a fact of the, the physics of our universe impossible, but it's not so far-fetched that it would be possible because most of uh, what you are as a person is, or at least seems to be, a zombie. I mean, most of your mental life, most of what you've managed to accomplish behaviorally, even emotionally, even on some level cognitively, happens in the dark. You know, it's not illuminated by consciousness. So if you're understanding anything I'm saying right now, if you're, you're decoding English words as they come out of my mouth, I'm making these sounds, and you are effortlessly understanding at least some of what I'm saying, uh, you are doing that by processes which you can't consciously inspect. If I say a word that you suddenly don't know, or if I, if I make a grammatical error, neither of us are in a position to inspect those processes consciously. Uh, and this is true with how you beat your heart and how you maintain balance and how you do many of the things that uh, support your conscious life. When you feel your body in space, right? When you, you, when you, you uh, engage something like proprioception, right? You, you feel where your hands are in space. That is conscious, the, con the feeling of, of having a hand, say. But most of what the brain has to do in order to produce that conscious experience is happening in the dark. So why isn't everything happening in the dark? That's, that is the mystery of consciousness. But many scientists and philosophers uh, seem to take this one step too far and say things like consciousness is or may be an illusion. In my view, consciousness is the one thing in this universe that can't be an illusion. I mean, you, no matter how confused we are about everything, that we might be in a dream, we might be running as simulations on some alien supercomputer, uh, you know, I might be a brain in a vat and, and, and the, the world that I experience doesn't exist, um, uh, the, uh, there's no end to, to the kind of confusion I might suffer at this moment, but the one thing I can't be confused about is that something seems to be happening. You know, there's, some, there's something that is like to be me, whatever I am. And that is the fact of consciousness, right? That's, that is whatever the, its relationship to the brain or whether I even have a brain, whatever its relationship to physics, uh, I could have everything wrong. The one thing I can't have wrong is that something seems to be happening right now. And that is all consciousness is.